Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. We are talking about different cells of immune system and today we are going to talk about basophils and mast cells in our immune system. The role of basophil and mast cells in our immune system, we are going to see their origin, their structure, location of action. We are going to see the function of basophils and mast cells. We are also going to talk about the mechanism of action of basophils and mast cells. And I am also going to talk about the difference between basophils and mast cells. So let's start with the origin of the basophils. So they are originated in the bone marrow from the hematopoietic stem cells and from the myeloid lineage, not from the lymphoid lineage. Okay, and the differentiation is influenced by interleukin 3. Remember that the basophils are influenced by the interleukin 3 or IL3. Now let's look at the structure of basophils. Basophils are bilobed say non-segmented that's not true actually it has bilobed generally bilobed nucleus you can see bilobed or sometimes looks like s so this is a category of shape that you are going to see okay and they are obscured by granules there are granules in there okay uh, there are granule field uh, inside you can see the granules are mentioned here with this pink color and we have glycogen some gly glycogen amount some amount of glycogen is also visible the granules that they have have histamine, heparin and cytokines uh, as a predominant components. Then they have high affinity to IgE receptor that is the FC, epsilon receptor of IgE on the surface. Okay, so they have this, their surface and their surface have this IgE receptor. This is IgE receptor known as the FC epsilon receptor for IgE. The location of action for basophil, if you look at the present in the blood, less than 1% of the leukocyte is actually under the basophils. Next is recruited to the sites of inflammation, especially during the allergic and parasitic response. When there is allergic response, uh, these are causing primary allergic reaction or IgE mediated allergy reaction and also in the parasitic responses they are involved. The function of basophils mediate allergic reaction remember this is the primary function by releasing the histamines leukotrienes prostaglandins and all these chemical factors so if they release the histamines they increase the vascular permeability and co also cause smooth muscle contraction so two important features of allergic reaction severe form of al allergic reactions due to the release of excessive histamine one is the vasodilatation the blood vessels gets dilated and airway constriction the airway gets constricted due to the smooth muscle contraction the next one is the defense against parasites okay and that they do generally the they have a defense against helminths or worms in our body okay and the cytokine production they produce a cytokine interleukin 4 interleukin 13 and that promotes t helper 2 activation and t helper 2 responses uh, t helper 2 lymphocyte differentiation and promotes further in immunoglobulin e or further ige production that is the overall role of the basophil Okay, that's the function of the basophil. Let's look at the mechanism of action and you see the activation, the cross-linking of FC epsilon receptor. So what happened is that you can see this is the surface, this is the resting cell, okay, and we have anti-IgE allergic compounds, okay, and if that is there, membrane IgE. So the membrane receptor is there where the IgE can bound. So let's say this is the uh, basophil surface we have Ig receptor and this Ig receptor is a place where the antibody can bind okay via the Fc region of the antibody this is a AB region of the antibody okay they bind and uh, along with this binding this interaction okay uh, it is going to activate and release this you know you can see that histamine granules are inside the membrane Ig is bound Okay, once membrane Ig is bound, what happens? Activation will be done. Due to the presence of any kind of allergic compound, the allergic compound, any kind of allergenic compound, the compound that can trigger this response in the yellow color here is visible. Ig is already bound to the Ig receptor on the surface of the basophils here. Now, yellow colored allergen is going to bind and trigger the activation of uh, this Ig that causes the CD63 mediated release of the granules. Granules start to release all the chemical factors. These are histamines. 
leukotrienes, prostaglandins, which causes the allergy reaction or anaphylactic reactions. Degranulation means release of histamines, heparins and proteases will be done. Proteases will destroy proteins in the tissues nearby. Cytokine secretion to recruit and activate other immune cells in the body. Okay, that is the basophils mechanism of action. And uh, if we now compare the basophils with the mast cells, then what difference that we see? See, basophils are the cells which are circulating in the blood. In the blood circulation, if the cell is present, we call them basophil. But the moment it is present in the tissue, we call them mast cells. So basically, basophil and mast cells have a relationship similar to that of the monocyte and macrophage. When in the bloodstream, we call that cell monocyte. Whenever it is in the tissue, we call it macrophage. Okay. Next is the release of histamine, heparin, cytokines in granules formed by the basophils. While again, the mast cells also release histamine, proteases and heparin. Okay. Next is the response. The basophil responded to IgE antigen and complement best activation. While mast cell gets activated because they interact with the toll-like receptors and produce sustained mediators. That's only the difference. Because the basophils are circulating in the blood, ves uh, blood vessels in the blood, they respond to the Ig antigen and also they respond to the complement proteins that are also present in the bloodstream. But mast cells are going to interact to the microorganism, particularly the toll-like receptor, which is a part of pattern recognition receptors of the pathogen to produce a sustained response of mediators. Now let's talk about the mast cells which is very much similar to the basophils that we talked about. There are only very minor differences. So mast cells origin again the hematopoietic stem cells of the bone marrow and uh, the immature cells migrate to tissues for maturation. And for the maturation of mast cells they require SCF. That's kind of growth factor. Okay. While the maturation of Basophils require interleukin-3. They are interleukin-3 influenced while mast cells are SCF influenced. Mast cell structure if you look they have more granules present and the cell is filled with granules. You can see that. Large cells larger than basophils and they have round granules. Uh, you can see round nucleus. The nucleus structure is also altered. Earlier, the nuclear structure is somewhere S-shaped or it looks something like this in case of basophils. But mast cell nucleus is large, globular, round nucleus. Cytoplasmic granules filled with histamine, tryptase, chymase and heparin chemical factors. And they have high affinity towards Ig receptor that is the Fc epsilon receptor of IgE. The location of action it is present in the tissues near blood vessels because this is where the basophils are converted to the mast cells in the tissue. They are found in the skin, mucosal surface and also found in the GI tract, gastrointestinal tract. They act as sentinels at interface between the external environment and the internal tissues. In the junctions of external and internal tissue they are found like skin, mucosal surface and GI tract, GI linings. The function, the key function is that again they serve as the first line of defense, not exactly the first line of defense because the first line of defense is by the neutrophils but what I can say is that after the neutrophils function these mass cells are present between the external and internal surface that is in the skin, in the mucus and the GI lining. They release diverse granules with histamines, heparin, protease, cytokines and antimicrobial properties that do their job. They cause anaphylaxis, they cause the killing of the microorganism, they also cause the tissue damage uh, and inflammation. Okay, They mediate inflammation and tolerance, supports anti-inflammatory cell generation and degrades uh, the inflammatory granules. So inflammatory granule degradation is prevented and also they recruit and activate inflammatory cells. That is something that they can do. They can recruit and they can further activate more and more inflammatory cells in our body. Okay, the key role is in the allergic and hypersensitivity reactions. Apart from that, defense against parasites, especially against helminths, which is done by uh, this mast cells and also by eosinophils. Tissue remodeling and wound healing property can also be done via proteases. Okay, 
and cytokine production to recruit and activate immune cells is another function. Mechanism of action, you can see the primary mechanism that is the hypersensitivity or IgE mediated hypersensitivity, class 1 hypersensitivity, type 1 hypersensitivity. What happens is that here is the mast cell filled with granules requires sensitization. The allergen comes in which is not harmful but our body recognize it as a harmful in the very first exposure then IgE immunoglobulin e is interacting to the Ig receptor in the surface and the Ig receptor can interact to two immunoglobulin E or two Ig at the same time and in the second exposure of the allergen we have IgE two Ig interact to one IgE receptor remember one receptor two IgE FC regions interact to that and allergen binds to it and that causes a signaling via CD63 and that's going to cause the degranulation and degranulation means release of the granules you know a fusion of the uh, of the vesicles to the membrane release of the granules release of the chemical factors like heparin like histamine outside of the cell and that is done here okay activation by Ig antigen cross-linking then we have degranulation release of histamine proteases and heparin and synthesis of leukotrienes, prostaglandins and cytokines are also being done in this mast cell mediated pathway that cause uh, that also helps them to interact with other immune cells like eosinophils and T cells. So the mast cells can also interact to eosinophil, they can also interact to the T helper cells as well. That's the mechanism of action of the mast cells. Okay, so what's the summary of the basophils and mast cells? Basophils and mast cells are key mediator of allergic and parasitic immune response in our body. Second is they both have high affinity towards IgE, but the mast cells have little higher affinity towards IgE and they can release potent inflammatory mediators. Basophils act in the circulation while mast cells are residents of our tissues and complementary roles in initiating in sustaining the immune responses in our body is done by both this basophils and mast cells. I believe we have a clear idea on the role of basophils and mast cells in the immune system. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to get more videos like that in future. And also if you wish to learn immunology, watch all the cells of immune system series, you will understand it much clearly. Thank you.